it's been two years now since we've had the impact south. So it's a good time to look back and see whether it worked or no. The first thing that struck you about uh, IPR 2024 was that the use of the impact sub was so much more dramatic. Teams were much better prepared. And we saw some fantastic outcomes as a result of uh, of using that impact sub. I don't know how it affected all you fantasy players. I know the stats guys are still tearing their hair out at the 12th player coming into the site. But in general, yes, the impact sub was far more dramatic. Should the impact sub continue then? You know, at its very heart, the idea of having an impact sub was that the best batters play against the best bowlers. What ended up happening was that most teams now had a batter at number eight. And so there was a freedom to go hard up in front. And so you had players like Travis Hare and Abhishek Sharma so dramatically for the Sunrisers. You had people like Jake Fraser McGurk, Sunil Narayan, really almost kamikaze bombers. Just go ahead and do it. Doesn't matter if you get out because you've got eight batters. Even if three come good, then that's fine. And as a result, we got more sixes this year. Uh, I shot a boundary with help, but that's an old peeve. We got many more runs this year. I mean, who would have dreamed that 287 would be scored and would be won by only 25 runs? 277 was scored. And at one point, at the halfway point, it looked like it would be shot down too. So lots of runs scored, sixes, runs, everything. And it didn't leave too much room for the bowlers. Now, you might argue, and you might argue with validity, that... It also allows you a sixth bowler. And so you must have more bowlers coming in and making life difficult for the batter. What we've seen in our game is that the batting has moved far ahead of the bowling. There's so much stacked in favor of the batter that you have to do something about the bowling. On another blog, I'll argue about what needs to be done about the pitches, about the kind of ball. But given the conditions that we had this year, I'm afraid the batting just went too far ahead of the bowlers. Now, it was argued that it would take away the all-rounder from the game. I'm not quite sure that that is true because if you're a genuine all-rounder, which means you can make the team as a batter and as a bowler, or you're so good at your second skill that you're a very significant addition to the side, then you're still worth your weight in gold. Who used it the best, the impact sub, was KKR. And why could they use it the best? Because in their top seven, they had Sunil Narayan and Andre Russell. As a result, 8, 9, 10, 11 bowl, Every day, day in, day out, you're playing with six bowlers and then use your impact sub at number eight. Every single game that KKR played, they played with eight batters and six bowlers. And they could only do that because they're two quality all-rounders. And as a result, they got in that small row, they got a very fine game changer in Raman Deep Singh. So if you are a bona fide all-rounder, you are a, a Sam Curran or a, um, or a Marcus Stoinis, Ravinder Jadeja, Akshar Patel, you will still strengthen your side enormously. Hardik Pandya in form is, is that kind of player. I'm hoping Niti Shreddy will become that kind of player too. So the bona fide all-rounder is still worth his weight in gold. What it did, this impact sub, was it minimized the role of two kinds of players. Someone who was a batter coming in at number six just kept getting pushed down. And, and I thought players like Rinku Singh or Tim David, players, players like those really couldn't make the impact they should have because they just keep getting further and further down. They became one of eight. Whether it should have happened or no is a, is, is a different story. And it marginalized the player with the second skill. It's such an important part of our game. If you're playing four bowlers, one all-rounder, you still want that batter who can give you a little bit, you know, the Sehwag, the Yuvraj, the Ganguly, Tendulkar kind of batter. Well, that kind of player got, got, got affected. So, uh, I was looking forward to seeing whether Abhishek Sharma can become a two-overs bowler and a flamboyant batter at the top. He's a good uh, left-arm spinner. We miss Rian Parag. We miss Shivam Dube. I even thought Hadapreet Brahl from the other end, who as, as, as a bowler, who could give you four overs every day, but if required, had the batting skills too. So those kind of players, and that was my issue. A lot of those kind of players went away from uh, this year's starter IPL. And that is at the heart of our game, isn't it? That you make the most of your resources and, and that is why I didn't particularly enjoy that, uh, that impact sub from that point of view. One of the things said in favor, though, of the impact sub is it added to the drama, it added to the spectacle of playing, it, so that the fans loved it. I did something to test that out. It's a very small sample size, so all you stats-driven people, you might say it's not statistically significant, but it gave me a little window into people's mind. I put out a poll on Twitter just for one hour. And I said, all you people who watch it, you big part of our game, 
did you like the impact sub in the IPL? And I thought I'd get a sort of 50-50 maybe, some people saying yes, some people saying no, some people saying, you know what, it was dramatic, we had great fun. And I was a little taken aback that 81% of the people said no, that they didn't like the impact sub. And I think that's a big factor because the players haven't enjoyed it very much. A lot of the stakeholders haven't enjoyed it very much. But we were saying it was good for the public. And on the basis of that relatively small sample size, I'm discovering that maybe the players didn't like it too much. And my other concern with the impact sub is it's, it's, it's like a drug. Now you want more and more of it. it. It gave you this spectacle of people hitting sixes. Now what next? Will you say after two years, on, yeah, I mean, I've got used to this impact sub. Why don't we have one batter coming back after the 18th over? Both sides have that option, right? Oh, it'll be great fun. You know, get one more batter in. You never know where to stop if you keep going down the path of creating a bigger spectacle. So, all, all things considered, I like the idea of 11 versus 11. I like the idea of young players bringing out a second skill to play. I like the, in, uh, the idea of overcoming little shortcomings that might arise or overcoming issues that might arise. So I think I think it had its moment in the sun, but my view is uh, let's go back to eleven versus eleven. So thank you for watching and do subscribe to this channel.